We're talking interview styles. This is gonna be a classic educational video. We're going through all the interview styles in documentary filmmaking. So let's get into it. The first style I'm just gonna call standard. This is when you have someone sitting, looking just off to the side of camera. This is where you put your interviewer as close to the lens as possible. That's my suggestion, because the eye line, look, I'm looking just off to the camera. You can already tell that I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking at the camera, looking off the camera, looking at the camera, off camera. So don't put someone over there because now you're getting a lot of the face. You wanna see both eyes, that's how we connect with people. But a standard interview is the safest way to approach documentaries. It's been kind of the more traditional way. It's often how I do my films. And the way to make it a bit more juicy is I like to use a floating camera to the side where I get that side angle, the camera's moving, I can go from their hands to their face, shallow depth of field. It feels a bit more cinematic, I would say, to use a very overused term but I like shooting from that side and the key with these interviews is always have the person looking towards the light wherever your key light is make sure they're looking to that side because then you'll have the shadow side on the opposite and that's where you'll put your B camera or if you have them looking off this way they're gonna be looking into the shadows and it's not as nice when people have full shadow on their face rather than looking into that beautiful light the pros of this style is that it's very safe and easy to do the con it's just that, it's very safe. It's probably the least creative approach, but that's okay, because it works. And sometimes though, it can feel a bit distant. If you just have a side angle and this person staring off into space, you don't always feel connected. Whereas if you do the Interatron, that's number two, which is coined from an amazing documentary filmmaker, Errol Morris, that's where you're looking down the barrel of the lens. Why it's called Interatron is he would use this kind of video display, two-way mirror glass, similar to a teleprompter, and he would display his face over the camera lens, and it would be two-way glass so you wouldn't see it on the image, but he would be talking to the person, looking right down the barrel. There's cheaper systems of this that just use mirrors, but the great part about that is what's happening right now in this, is I'm connecting with you. I'm looking into your eyes and you're looking at me, and you're beautiful in every single way. Don't let anyone ever tell you that. But we get to have a connection, even though I'm just staring into a deep, dark black hole of the camera lens. And where the Interatron style excels is that it's more intimate. It creates a better connection with the audience, in my opinion, than other styles, because you're looking directly at them. Now, the con of it is that it does require some technology. One benefit of it is in my CNN film, is they interatroned me into the interview. I was in Canada, and Rod here was down in LA, and we were talking together. I was just over Zoom, and he could see my face on the Zoom screen, and it felt like we had a conversation. So it is a cool style. It's sometimes overused, but you do see in a lot of documentaries these days, and so it's a great way to try out. And one little thing is if you have someone who's a bit more confident, you don't necessarily need the Interatron, you can just ask them to look directly into lens when they talk, but usually looking into a lens is a bit intimidating. The next interview style is conversational. This is where you get two people talking about a topic and you shoot it kind of like a traditional scripted film. The difficulty of this is you're often gonna need two cameras to cross shoot or you gotta be good at getting what we call the counter shot. This is the person listening. You can see the scene from Battleground. I did this on my own. It's very intimate and it feels like something happening in real time. But what I had to do at the end is I had to go back over and just ask Kwesi to nod and listen, which can get awkward at times, but man, it's such a natural style of interview and you can prompt the people to talk about certain subjects, but what's great is they make Make it their own. This is truly one of my favorite styles of documentary interviews because it feels the most natural. Conversational when pulled off authentically can be one of the more powerful interview styles in a documentary. And in our course, The Art of Documentary, we break down a ton of different scenes from our feature length documentaries where we do conversational style. Mike really implements this quite amazing in his films. He'll break down full scenes in his award-winning documentaries of how he shoots conversation interviews on his own own to make it look like there's two cameras. And he does an amazing job of prompting them in a way that it never feels like there's a director. So it feels like you're just a fly on the wall. And if you're interested in an art of documentary, we're opening the doors September 12th. You always hear me talking about this. This is launch season. And I have to talk about it because you'll miss out. We don't open the doors again till March of next year. And what is art of documentary? Well, it's our course in Academy. It's a huge community of over 2,500 filmmakers who are making amazing films right now. And we get to encourage each other. We do monthly Zoom calls. We have over 140 videos between our three modules, which go into how to tell stories, how to find documentaries, how to never get stuck in your edit, how to increase your business as a filmmaker so you can go shoot these documentaries, these passion projects, everything you've ever needed 
to know about filmmaking. Not just the gear and technical, not just how to use LUTs or transitions, but how to actually tell a story. Doesn't matter what camera you have in your hand or what technical knowledge you have, if you don't know how to tell a good story. And that's where Art of Documentary comes in to help you complete the films that are on your heart and that you know you're meant to make. The world needs your voice and you don't have to make those films on your own. So come be a part of the Art of Documentary. The doors open September 12th, we'll have 30% off, but let's get back to the tutorial. I just get excited about AOD. So our fourth interview style, I call this the host plus standard. This is where you have that standard interview where someone's looking just off camera, but instead of looking into the void, we actually get to see what they're looking at, which is a reverse angle of a host. This is typical of news journalist films. You'll sometimes see people like Michael Moore implement this into their films. You get to see the conversation that's happening, but the way the filmmakers approach this is they're not avoiding the fact that it's actually a sit down interview. It's two people in a very traditional sense, sitting in chairs, well lit, talking. This best works, like I mentioned, for journalist pieces or films where you've decided to put yourself in the movie. To be honest, it's not my favorite style, but it is effective if you're doing a journalist style documentary. But there's another version with a host called host plus conversation. And again, I've just coined all these terms. There might be other terms and you can leave them below. This is that Anthony Bourdain style. This is where we're not just watching a conversation, but we're aware there's a host and they're prompting the person with questions, but we get to watch them conduct that interview in a very casual sense. So it's a conversation, but the host is there to help guide it along. The downfalls of this is that again, it can get boring at times if we're just watching someone try to ask questions that may not be working. But the engaging part of this is that it's fun. You get to do it wherever you want. You can do it in a car, you could do it walking in a field. There's many different ways to approach the host plus conversation style. And if you again are in your own film, if you've put yourself in this film or you're following a host, it's a great way to keep it natural and it doesn't feel so stagnant. The next style I wanna talk about is what I call in the moment. This is where we're seeing two people walking. It's a bit similar to host plus standard, but something is happening on camera. Again, it's like watching a conversation except we're watching two people do something and you're grabbing bits of the interview that way. You sometimes see TV shows do this where they'll have them doing a task. They'll do like basket weaving or something. I don't know if we can even find B-roll of that. But this gets away from the host conversation style and again, begins to feel more authentic because it doesn't actually feel like an interview feels like more of an organic, natural conversation. And the last interview style is just standard voiceover. This is where you don't have the person on camera. But I would always encourage you, if you can, shoot that interview, because you never know when you need to cut to it. But films like Kill or Be Killed, or my latest film about tornadoes, I mostly rely on voiceover in those films, but I still shoot the interviews for that one or two moments where I do cut to them. You'll watch Killer Be Killed. We filmed that entire interview and Joel narrates the entire film, but we only cut to it like twice. And that's where I would rather show engaging B-roll that embodies what he's saying than just sitting there watching someone talk. But I think voiceover is a great way for you as a filmmaker to push yourself, to push yourself to shoot more real-time scenes and to show more of life rather than having someone just sit there and tell you about life. Showing is way more interesting than telling. And I would encourage you, if you're making your films, don't just settle for someone talking and then cutting to random B-roll. If you're gonna have B-roll, make it connect to what they're talking. And if you don't have to show them talking, show some engaging B-roll, or better yet, show a scene. So there you go, I hope that helped. Shooting interviews is one of my favorite parts of documentary, you don't have to be scared about it. If you're nervous on how to do that, we have tons of information on this YouTube channel. Better yet, check out Art of Documentary because we have tons of videos on how to do better interviews, how to set them up, what questions to ask, and more importantly, knowing what story you're telling when you're going into the interview because you are a storyteller, you're not just a content capturer. So leave some comments below if there's any other videos you guys want me to do. Make sure to jump on the artofdocumentary.com onto that wait list, 30% off on September 12th. Doors are only open for two weeks. Don't miss this chance to take the next step in your career. We'll have payment plans and we'll have bundled deals if you wanna buy multiple courses. Don't just take my word for it. Get in the comments and I'm sure there's some AOD students watching this who will let you know how much they love the community. Check it out, theartofdocumentary.com and I'll see you on the next one.